Hey, Bruce Naylor, your Boomer Consumer. Thanks so much for watching. I think this is going to be a fun video today. We're going to be reviewing the IEMA A07 Max Class D Amplifier. And I want to thank my friends at IEMA for sending this to me for review. However, all opinions are my own. No one's reviewed this video prior to posting. So there is that. Now, let's talk a little bit about the video. In this video, we're going to go over, you know, the unboxing, my initial impressions, the design, build, features, and a whole lot more. So you want to stick around to the very end. Now, these sell for right now, they are on sale for $74. <laughs> what? I, it just blows my mind that you can buy such a powerful, good sounding little Class D amp. So cheap, it just amazes me. And this stuff just keeps getting better and better. So let's take a look at what comes in the box with the A07 Max. Well, you get the power cord that comes with it. You get the quick start guide. You get the power supply. You get the A07 Max and also a uh, like a quality control certificate with it. And that's what comes in the box. I think IEMA does a pretty nice job packaging these things up. My initial impression when, you know, when I first opened up the box of this was, man, this is nice and small. This thing is only just slightly over six inches in, in width, 3. almost four inches in depth at 3.94 inches, and it is just a little over one and a half inches in height. I like that it has um, an LED for either stereo or if you're using this in a mono block scenario in mono. I like that. Knob field, it is a plastic knob. Now the rest of the case is all metal. You got these nice little kind of holes in the side here for cooling purposes. Why they didn't put, at least put a metal uh, volume control on there? I don't think it's metal. It feels kind of plastic. There's no detents, nothing like that. I kind of wish maybe they might have put just a little bit more effort into that. You know, 2.2 pounds, and given the size of how small it is, you really put this just about anywhere on your desktop. You could put it, you know, maybe in the bedroom on a nightstand, something like that. Makes it really versatile. Powerful amplifiers don't have to be huge, right? They just don't, and this certainly is not. Now, as far as... You know, places to put this at. Again, I think desktop, bedroom, den, a whole lot of other places. Now let's talk a little bit about the features and specs of the A07 Max. So on board, it ships with the TPA3255 Texas Instruments uh, Class D amplifier chip. And a lot of different devices are using these. They're, they're fantastic. But that's only part of the story. You also have to have the op amps to go with it. Now, this comes with swappable op amps, the NE 5532s. So power-wise, the most you can get out of this, if you get it with the 48-volt 10-amp power uh, supply, it's going to be 185 watts per channel to 8 ohms. And now, according to the manufacturer, 190 in mono. Now, mine ship with the 36-volt 6-amp supply, which is 94 watts per channel in the stereo and 118 in the mono. Again, the op amps are swappable, and they do use some really high-quality components in there, including uh, Japanese Rubicons, ELNAs, capacitors, German WIMA uh, capacitors, and, uh, IT, and the um, uh, IT power management chip. So there's good stuff on the inside of the A07 max and just a little tour on the front is very very simple you've got your volume knob off and on you hear a little click there you go you got your volume knob you got two little leds down here one again telling you you're in stereo mode the other one if you're in mono on the bottom let's see if we can get this into focus come on there we go right there is where you set the little dip switch in there whether you're going to use it in monoblock or stereo mode, okay? Then on the rear, you have your audio, RCA audio inputs. And then if you're going to run this only in mono, as a monoblock, you'd yuck your speakers to hear, but if you're running in stereo, then you'd use all four. 
you have a 3.5 millimeter audio output. Use that made with a power and sub, something like that. And then you have your DC power input, which will handle anywhere between 24 to 48 volts. And that's on the rear. On the side, you have these little cooling holes on there. I gotta tell you, I normally don't listen super loud when I'm evaluating stuff, but I, I cranked up to around about 80 to 85 dB, about the max. And this never really got very, very hot. It was slightly warm, but it never got boiling hot or anything like that. So I think power management and thermal management, pretty good job that they did with this. All right, let's talk a little bit about the source and the gear that I use to evaluate the A07 Max. So I basically rip a lot of CDs to ALAC, which is Apple's version of FLAC. And I have that on a Mac Mini that I'm using as a music server running Plex server on there. And then I connect via USB to the Hi-Fi Man Serenade DAC headphone amplifier, and then out of there goes into the IEMA. Right? And that's kind of the sources uh, that I use. So all ALAC files and, a, and the speakers I use were the KEF Q150s. I use them in a near field position, which I think has worked out very well for me evaluating some of these class D uh, amplifiers. I think it does a, a wonderful, wonderful job. Now, as far as the music is concerned, uh, one of the albums is Led Zeppelin's Physical Graffiti, which I believe is their sixth studio album. And the track House of the Holy is just has so much punch in the sound. You got a big sound stage. I gotta say, I think this lamp puts out a, a really good sound stage. Bass is solid. The mid range is clean and the highs are crisp, right? Now, Going a little bit further, I want to talk about the next track that I, I think this one just blows me away every time I hear it, and that is Cashmere. And that track, like I said, just blows me away every time I hear it. It's powerful. Robert Plant's vocals with Jimmy Page's guitar. It's just an incredible, incredible experience. And I got to tell you, this sounded amazing on the A07. Now, the second album I listened to was Sylvia Brooks' signature album. And that was recorded, I believe, in 1920, or 1922, sorry, uh, 2022. And just has some great piano work in there. Tom Rainer, Jeff Coella, uh, Christian Jacob. Just such luscious melodies in this album. It's jazz, but yeah, there's some Latin uh, beat to it. Her vocals um, in the track Black as Night really, really shined on the AO7. One of my favorite tracks on this album is called Catch-22. It's just excellent, and I it, sh it showcases Sylvia's vocal range, and I just think that the, the, the bass responsiveness on this amp is well-controlled. Mid-bass has a lot of punch to it. Mid-range is neutral. You know, that's where most of the music lives, is in the mids, and maybe it's just a bit warm, but never clinical, doesn't have that digital sheen to it. And the same goes with the treble, which is very airy without uh, any real fatigue. The soundstage, uh, I think, is very deep and tall. And when you want to talk about imaging, of course, the Q150s give you excellent imaging and soundstage to begin with. And you know what? This little amp did not detract from any of that. And one thing I want to talk about and I think it's very important, is thermal efficiency, right? This case never, ever got hot at any time, right? Now, I typically listen somewhere between around 74, 75 to 80 dB max. Uh, one of the complaints about some of these less expensive Class D amps is that when you really push them hard, uh, they begin to kind of come apart as far as distortion, uh, that type of thing. I don't push them that hard, but I would say that uh, for the average person, even for you entry-level audiophiles, I don't think that's ever going to be an issue for you with this amplifier. But you never know, so keep that in mind. But to wrap this up, 
I think for what, 75 bucks right now on sale, normally it's like $92. This is like, and I know the inevitable, okay, let's just cut the gorilla, 800 pound gorilla in the room. How does this compare to the Fosse ZA3, for example? Well, I think it's extremely competitive. It's half the price right now, or about half the price. So that makes it very competitive. And again, you could get two of these for the price of, you know, just about one of the, the ZA3s. I do think the ZA3 sounds a little bit better. I think the build quality is superior. It's a little bit more hefty, the music. But I think you're getting a heck of a value with this, and it certainly may do you very, very well for the price. So, you know, you're getting a powerful Class D amplifier. You're getting the swappable op amps. You can use it in mono blocks. There's solid components inside. It sounds excellent. <laughs> And uh, so I think it's very much worth the price for a starter system. And there's a lot of people, younger people especially, getting into hi-fi and audio, and they like desktop devices. This is a killer little amp. Can't go wrong for 75 bucks. I'm just, it just amazes me. So I want to thank you for watching. If you like this video, please leave a comment. Um, I've you know, if you like the video, hit that like button and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Stay tuned because I'm going to have a very special review coming up in the near future. Well, that's really it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.